Ladies and gentlemen, it is the Big Jiu-Jitsu Show. Don't forget to check out our sponsors, Trap and Roll Soap Company, Tape Armor, and Rolls Gear. And you can find all of our old episodes at bjjshow.com. I'm Rob, and uh, I guess me and Randy are back. After quite a few months of us not doing an episode or doing a podcast in general, we decided it's time to get back to it because everybody else has started to train. Or at least in some, in some capacity, they've started to train. So... We talk a little bit about getting back into it, about the mental health benefits as usual, stuff like that. So we really hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you want to find some of our old episodes, go to bjjshow.com. You can also buy a t-shirt, buy a patch, get some stickers, send us an email about things we should talk about. You can do all of that there. And we hope you enjoy this episode. <laughs> oh, hey, do you think man. people... Do you think people are still, you know, out there listening no. to? No. Hell no. Absolutely <laughs> not. All of our fan, all of our one fan is out there. But he's, he's, he's like, all right, well, they've been gone for a few months. I think it's time for me to move on. What was that? Oh, what was it? Um, a movie I was watching, Blades of Glory. Like after, oh, okay. after um, <clears throat> was it John Heater? You know, they get disgraced and like the one guy's falling around. He's like, you guys really need to return. And I'm gonna kill you. Like, <laughs> I think we have one person doing that right now. But one so per- or or it's like or it's like a sad love story where the uh, like these stupid Hallmark movies that my girlfriend just got done watching for the year, and <laughs> you know he's he's going back to you know our one listener is is going back to their hometown and rekindling their love for a previous you know previous uh, heartthrob, and we've we've lost them. We've lost our one listener. Yeah, but I'd like to be known as that previous heartthrob. I think that's a good thing to be known as. The podcast is that heartthrob, and we're back. Yeah, and we're back. Of, we're back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is the Big Jiu-Jitsu Show. I'm Rob. I'm Randy. And we've taken seven years off, and we're back. <laughs> it's not seven. It's fucking... When was the last one we dropped? I don't even remember, because it was like right when we were like, dude, we can keep talking about jiu-jitsu, but mm-hmm. there's like... This COVID thing, I think it's starting to shut down the gym. So I think we'll make do. And here we are, mm-hmm. ten. I think later. it was. Yeah, I think the last episode was when we did that. Um, not to wear your gi to a bar episode, wasn't that the mm. last one we did? That was. I think that was the last episode we did where we talked about our favorite book, "Don't Wear a Gi to a Bar." Yeah, yeah, because we were trying to we were trying to like uh, lift everybody's spirits in the midst of the the pandemic. Yeah. Then we failed ourselves yeah. and we just quit. <laughs> we we blue belted. Yeah, I don't even. I don't even do jiu-jitsu anymore. Do you do jiu-jitsu still? Um, I started back doing uh kung fu, you know, because <laughs> my chi is weak and I need to like bring bring up the uh, kung fu chi method. Like dude, that's how much I don't know about kung fu is I can't even talk about it rationally, it's, dude. It's one. It's 2020. I decided to make the leap. I went to Krav Maga. Oh, oh, oh man, brave dude, mm. brave, brave <laughs> man. So what it's not even one. Of the, it's not even, dude. It's not even one of the legit Krav Maga schools either. It's like totally one of these westernized, watered down versions and stuff. Where it's like, you know, almost like a, a bastardized version of Taekwondo with like the, but they just wear tacked out gear and they call it Krav Maga. That's that's where I'm at. That's my favorite type of Krav Maga. Is the one where you take like where you take like a week course and never practice it again, but still claim to be yeah. an instructor. Like you don't teach yeah. it. And you don't do shit. You just say you're a Krav Maga yeah. instructor. Cause you took the online class. Completely certified instructor in my you know, <laughs> 32 hour class. And I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to teach, you know, cops and military and everything. I'm ready to go. You Dude, know? Just, just fucking run with it make all the money. And you can be mm-hmm. like, I'm a law enforcement officer and I'm a veteran and just do that and make, make coffee. And then you've got the fucking perfect business plan these days. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Yep. So for I'm real like, though, what have, what have you been doing since we, 
Well, dude, I mean, so let me, let me start this off by saying I'm not really doing Krav Maga. No, no, no hate on Krav Maga people. I got, <laughs> no, I've got weird. friends that train and I got friends that train in some legit Krav Maga. They're definitely good. Every art has its, its McDojo's and its legit schools, but, um, and Jiu Jitsu is not even immune to that. But I, so four months, I missed four months of Jiu Jitsu training due to COVID. And why does my room, my hat look really big? It's like that commercial where the, the guy's getting a character drawn and he's got like the, you know about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I think it's just I the angle like, of, of the camera you're using. That's all it is. Uh, I feel like it's really better. But four months, four months <laughs> of, uh, of jujitsu missed due to uh, the pandemic. And then finally, they reopened gyms in North Carolina. So I went back and good God, the first month and a half, I would say, was brutal. Like, I oh, mean, yeah. it, the, the conditioning, I mean, I worked out, I never missed a workout, you know, I had my garage gym, I kept training, I kept hitting the heavy bag, I stayed in shape, but we all know, we all know how different jujitsu conditioning is um, than anything else. And so, I mean, it's just nothing that, that can replicate it. Um, so I'm back on the mats, I am back. And I finally am back to where I feel like I'm getting better as opposed to playing catch up with where I used to be. Um, so that's what I've been up to. I mean, I, four months of not doing jujitsu was brutal, bad for the mental health. Not, I mean, I missed it that, you know, that that's so big for me. It's an outlet like no other. Um, but during that time I worked out did my kickboxing and did a lot of reading, um, you know, and working, obviously my, my role in my job has changed. I'm no longer on the road doing, uh, patrol officer things. I'm now a, a training coordinator, essentially. Oh, so, hell yeah, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. How about you? What you been up to? Well, um, let's see. So the COVID thing happened and I decided to continue doing some form of exercise. So I don't die walking up a flight of stairs. And I did, uh, <laughs> we have an elliptical machine in the house. So I started jumping on that and my back's like, Hey man, you know, you haven't really done this in forever. Yeah, that that really mm-hmm. showed. And I started doing like um, circuit training. Really, I talked about the uh, the John Wick uh, circuit that they did with resistance bands, and oh, yeah, yeah. my mm-hmm. uh, my joints still feel pretty good. Um, I think the only issue I really had coming back was my lower back started freezing up doing kickboxing again, and I think that might have been more of not uh, what was it? Not so much like poor anything it's just like trying to do too much too fast i was like you know like you cut weight you you compete what's the first thing you do you jam a whole bunch of sandwiches in your face and drink a whole bunch of beer or whatever and just lay on your bed and just hate life it's kind of like how it was for me like i was cutting weight cutting jujitsu and muay thai out come back to Mm -hmm. the classes and i'm like full speed like trying to oh yeah and i'm just at the end of one of the classes I just stopped. I was like, I, I need, I need to stop for a second. Like my back's freezing up. And I actually was it a few weeks ago, kind of tweaked it bad enough where I, I didn't train that week because just like it, something happened in my lower back and like it, I threw it out or it froze up and I just ended up laying mm-hmm. on the floor of my room, just praying for something to come take the pain away or whatever. Cause I couldn't get up. <laughs> And eventually, like, you know, enough ibuprofen, heating pads, stretching, and a couple rolls, which I shouldn't have done, helped stretch it back out. So I felt I felt pretty good oh, with yeah. that. But now I'm back to doing, like, two or three times a week, just jujitsu right now, trying to ease back into it, trying to get my body used to it again. I've lost some flexibility, but like you said, man, the cardio is way different than, oh, yeah. than like, what you're used to. It's so fucking wild. Well, I mean, I came back in and man, I was getting, I was getting smashed by purple belts again, you know, like just the, <laughs> the ones that, the, the ones that never stopped, you know, yeah. let's face it. And there's listeners out there right now that, you know, our one listener, maybe, maybe he's that one um, that, uh, you know, never stopped training. And I envy you. And we said this before we even started recording, you know, I, I envy the people that never stopped training. I kind of had yeah. to, uh, because of my profession, I couldn't be that guy out there violating the laws. So four months missed. And, uh, when I came back, the ones that never stopped training, it showed, 
you know, Hey, and good for you. I don't, I don't hate on it at all. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm glad, you know, if you could, if you, you know, one of the, one of the guys I trained with his girlfriend is a, a high level purple belt squared away. So, I mean, he literally had access to a really good training partner every single day. I wish I had that, you know, uh, um, but it just, it wasn't the reality that I was living in. So, you know, you come back and that's one of the beautiful things about jujitsu is it humbles you and there's always somebody better. And honestly, when you get to those upper belts, there's not as big of a gap between uh, abilities as you think there should be. So, you know, if, if they catch you slipping, they're going to tap you out. And Absolutely. so it's, I've had to kind of, I've had to humble myself. And, you know, one thing that we talked about the other day too is, you know, my game is different now. Um, the things I was working on prior to the, the, the break, that extended break uh, are kind of gone. And, and, you know, my A game obviously is still there. My B game a little bit still there, but everything else that I was trying to kind of bring in have they're for the most part gone. And I've kind of started to go a different route with my game, which I think is kind of a good thing. It, it kind of, it's kind of, you know, blasted through a plateau that I was in prior to the break. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's always that maybe, maybe next time we train, because my game is so different. Maybe I'll, I'll catch you napping. You never know. Dude, I'll be, I'll be down for that, man. That just means you get trained <laughs> together at that point. No, it's, <laughs> I kind of went through the same thing because kind of the same like issue, like, you know, for, for my job, I can't just be out, you know, rubbing pos possible uh, coronavirus stuff all over my face from other people. <laughs> and I mean, I totally get it because like, you know, if I go to work and I get somebody sick and the whole team gets sick, then you know, yeah, it's a bad day for everybody yeah. there. But, um, right. you know, it's uh, now that I'm able to kind of work and train with a group of people who are constantly like getting their nose scraped out for the most part. And mm. we're, all, we're all good to go. It's uh, it's kind of interesting because, like you said, there's not that much gap in skill the higher belt mm. you get. And on right. top on top mm. of that, like like you said, you got to be real careful because some of these like real game blue belts and purple belts, you know, your brown belt ain't oh, yeah. gonna save you. They're they're still coming for you. And then they get the opportunity to be like, yeah, man, you know, I fucking tap that brown belt out. Can't let them have yep. that. But also <laughs> like. Oh man, I fight tooth and nail sometimes to not let them have that, and it's still yeah. rough. Yeah, but dude, well, I'm see, so back into it, I love it, man. Did you see the? Uh, I, I might have the age wrong, and maybe even the belt rank wrong, but they, uh, there was like a 14 year old green belt that went and tapped out a bunch of black belts in a tournament. I believe. It, I mean. Man. And, and, and it, it, you know, it makes sense because when you look at it, obviously the, the, the kid is, is a green belt because he's not old enough to have a blue belt. Right. But that doesn't mean that his skill isn't like through the roof. I mean, some of these kids are prodigies and uh, I mean, but that, that's just, to me that I read that and I was like, man, that's awesome because it doesn't, it doesn't detract from the honor and, and the hard work and, and the, respect that you gain when you attain your black belt, you know, all, all the kudos in the world to the, to the people that make it to that level. And, and even Brown belt and purple belts take so much work yeah. to get there. Um, but I think it just proves that you, just because you got that belt doesn't mean you can just like walk through everybody like a hot knife through butter. You're going to have to earn it. And there's a lot of tough people coming up the ranks. Um, you know, we got a guy in my gym, Adam, he's like a sponge of knowledge. He's a purple belt, but and I will tell you what, that guy at a purple belt, you know, there, there are black belts out there that need to be cautious rolling with them. And oh, it's shit. just, there, there are a lot of people out there like that, you know, and especially when the sport guys and girls that they're competing. And some of them, I think are kind of sandbagging a little bit, maybe uh, with their belt ranks, but uh, just kind of proves that the journey is more about you and not about you versus everybody else when it comes to the, this art. But man, it's been a humbling experience coming back. <laughs> oh yeah, it's me, it's me. Like you said, you know, I was like, oh, you know, I'll let my size and my, you know, flexibility save my ass. It, neither of those things saved my ass. It was more or less like, oh man, I really have to, really have to, not really step my game up, but kind of fall back. So you're talking about like your game. Yeah. So my game for yeah. a while mm -hmm. was trying to like mm -hmm. what I was working on before all this shit happened was all De La Hiva stuff. I really wanted to get my De La Hiva game good. Mm -hmm. And now I'm back to straight up just like half guard, escape half guard, submit people. It's like mm -hmm. it's a lot of half guard. It's a lot of um, 
open guard to them playing, yep. just going back to it, getting used to it because it's um it's a lot of like you said playing catch up and now you get to the point where you're improving you know i had a bit of a longer break just because around me i didn't have that access to um the gyms i really wanted to and you know what was it so i stopped in february and it's only been like it's like seven months for me really to start to get back into it and now last month i went and inverted <clears throat> so i'm like okay we're we're back on yeah. track we're good to go <clears throat> excuse me but I'm just – I'm glad that people are, are still able to roll. And like you said, that green belt, the thing is, too, some, I forgot to mention that. Somebody once pointed out to me that just because you have a green belt doesn't mean you have to go to blue right after. Because wasn't there a promotion of somebody from green to, like, purple or brown or something like that? It wasn't Probably. that long ago. I thought Probably. it was like a few years ago <clears throat> that that happened. But, yeah, it just means that when you turn, what, 16, you're eligible for a blue belt. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Do I have that age right? Yeah. I mean, but then and I knew, I knew, well, you know, like, you know, uh, I've, I've mentioned before this kid, Tommy Quasi that trains out in Eden that I used to train with. He was really young when I was training there. Obviously he's a grown ass man now, but <laughs> cause I'm old. Um, but he, uh, you know, he was a prime example of one that probably could have skipped a rank when he turned of age, you know, because he was yeah. younger than 16 and he was training with full grown adults, you know, from the, I think, I think he probably started training with the adults class at like 12 or 13 or something crazy and was tapping adults out. Nice. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. so, I mean, he, he definitely could, I watched him, you know, I've watched him dominate full grown men when he was younger. And so, yeah, I, I agree with you hundred percent. I think it doesn't necessarily mean you got to go like sequential in order, but yeah. It's a crazy world out there. And now it's 2020. You can do whatever the fuck you want now. I mean, it's, do whatever you, cause I was going to say like, that's only IBJJF rules to be honest with you. And I don't think Eddie Bravo gives a shit about those or, you know, and it's, it's slowly becoming like less of a big organization, which is nice, but it's still the mm-hmm. one you got to go to if you want to be considered like top tier <clears throat> to compete. Well, and that's why I joined that's why I joined that belt checker site. Finally. I know you and I have talked about it before. Yeah. Uh, and I finally got on board with it. Um, no, no hatred toward IBJJF, but I just think that sometimes when these federations or these companies get a little too big, um, sometimes it's not a good thing because then it starts to become political and financial based versus actually merit based. Um, and so I kind of like the way that the belt checker thing is set up right now, where it's more of a, it's more of a democracy. You know, you've got, you're, you're judged more by your peers than by some federation that doesn't even know you. And I kind of like that. Um, working on getting up there. I only got 270 out of like 700 necessary points for damn Brown belt. But uh, I'm unfortunately not enough of my, my friends and training partners are, are uh, on there. And if they are on there, they're not vetted yet or whatever, or they're a yeah. blue belt and they only give me like damn five points. <laughs> but you know, it's uh, but it seems like a great concept. So it is. Christian really did a good thing with it. I think that was right before. I think it was created right before the IBJJF kicked out the Globe Trotters. Not that they couldn't compete; they just can't be like the Globe Trotter school. And it, the whole reason behind it was dumb. It's like uh, you never see your instructor all the time who promotes you and like you got to go right. to a camp to get promoted and they like they will line you up and you're like hey look i want to get promoted can you guys please look at me and they're like yeah roll with me and then like these other four black belts and then we'll get together and talk and be like yes or no which i think's mm-hmm. great and that's, what it is that's a great school. way to do it yeah hell yeah that's a great way to do it man yeah yeah, I, I gotta get. To, I gotta go to one of these with you sometime when all this stuff opens back up. I gotta go to one. Heidelberg Camp, my friend, I'm telling you, it's a party. Yeah. Not well, it, it, they're all parties. But what I'm saying is like, you know, you hit Heidelberg. We'll hit some of the old schools I know out there. Roll around with them. Get to experience Germany for a bit, and then do the camp. Head back. Have a great time. Yeah, that's a, dude, that sounds like an amazing time. It is. It's a great time. But uh, I don't know, man, like the way things are opening back up and stuff, like a lot of the camps just started back up and you need like a PRC test to get into them. And I know, mm-hmm. um, of course, like I have an airplane going overhead right now. So I apologize. I don't know if you can hear it. Can't even hear it. 
that's great. That's perfect. But um, <laughs> just a shout out to Razer headsets for doing the great job where I'm at. <laughs> um, but things are slowly getting back to normal. I mean, the vaccine's coming out. Whatever you feel about it, like, yeah, dude, we need to just get on with it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm waiting for mine. I was like, yo, stick me. Let's do this. <laughs> Cause like, yeah, but I mean, you, you know, you did your time in the military, you know how it is like they do pin cushion anyway, might as well. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm good on anthrax. Let's just throw the whole like, <clears throat> like coronavirus thing on it. That was the other argument I laughed about. Cause they're like, they'll give you a card so you can travel with them. Like, yeah, like yellow fever when I had to go to Africa, like <laughs> you have to be like, look guys, I'm good. Please let me in your country for work. Thanks. But, yeah, people always talk about the BJJ gauntlet with the belts, whether they're on board with it, not on board with it, you know, promotion stuff. And I just think back to the gauntlet I had to walk in, in the military when they stick to you <laughs> on both sides. And then you, you get to the end of the line, they're like, all right, drop your pants. Here comes the good one. Oh, bro. You know, that was freaking the A shot. So, Taekwondo saved me from that one because they're like, balance on one leg yeah. and it makes it way easier if you just relax the other one. I'm like, pfft. That was like seventy five percent of Taekwondo was balancing on one leg and letting the other one do something else. Yeah. So I got I got the shot and everybody's like walking out screaming like oh my butt it hurts and I'm just <laughs> strolling out no problem. <clears throat> Great time. They made us go in PT after that. They do it to you guys? Oh, no, they didn't do that to us. Thankfully. Yeah, yeah, that sucked. I think we um, the only the only real casualty we had from the shots was we you know how like. So you go in the line and you stay in a parade rest and you get your hands behind your back and, you know, you're just waiting there. And when you move, you go to attention, then you walk and then you stop at attention. You go to parade rest, your hands behind your back. Mm-hmm. And um, some people were very afraid of the needles. So we had one person like, you know, go to attention, walk at a parade rest, saw the people sticking like two arms at the same time and mm-hmm. fainted and mm since their hands were behind their back didn't break their fall whatsoever. So they like toppled oh, over this man. bench and just face planted on the tile floor. I felt bad for them. I mean, you know, after you found that out they're sucks, okay, man. it was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> like when they would fall out in formation, same thing. Like <laughs> that was, that was always kind of, <laughs> I laugh because I've been a victim of it as well. Cause I'm standing there. I'm like, man, it's really hot out. It probably should have hydrated. And then just all of a sudden I'm like, see like the ground is coming up right into my face yeah well i still I, to this day if i have to stand for an extended period of time i still like kind of add a little bend in my legs and kind of move oh, my yeah. feet a little bit just to kind of keep that blood flow and not lock out but um oh and so something else uh that came up too uh while all this stuff has been going on uh miami that i train at we we became an affiliate of uh adopt a cop bjj nice uh, I don't know if you've heard of that program or not. I have, but you should uh, probably explain it to the listeners. Yeah. So it's a pretty cool thing. I was pretty excited to find it. You know, I'm one of these people that thinks that uh, jujitsu should be possibly mandatory. I think it'd be great. You know, ideal scenario, every, every cop would have uh, at least a blue belts level of knowledge in jujitsu. That would be tremendous for law enforcement. I think it would improve perception. I think it would decrease excessive force allegations. I think it would just have this incredible, ripple effect across the whole profession and it would help with our uh, perception amongst the, the public as well. But there's this program that, that I happen to find because my old gym uh, team rock Eden actually joined it and posted about it. And that's how I got introduced to the concept of it. And I looked at it and I'm like, man, this is brilliant. Almost too good to be true. Um, <laughs> and what it is, is this company, uh, you know, they, they, they sell clothing and, and, you know, fitness stuff and supplements and they started their own idea where they have this adopt a cop BJJ. That's almost like a foundation. It's a program, but it's almost a foundation where they take proceeds from things they sell and they basically pay for uh, a police officer to get training uh, up to blue belt level. So if you have an affiliated Academy, which now my gym uh, TFTC and carry is an affiliate gym. When you have an affiliated gym, it means that the first officer to get sponsored in this program gets a free ride all the way to blue belt through this company. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty substantial. That's two years approximately worth of training, which is phenomenal. 
Um, there's some things that the officer has to do to stay in the program. They have to make sure they train once a, at least once a week, every single week, unless yeah. they have an alibi, like injury, sickness, whatever, then they're good. But, um, and they have to post on social media, they train and tag the, the program. But I mean, that's nothing. I would do that if I was over for a friendship. Um, and then even if you go to a non-affiliated gym or an affiliated gym that already has somebody sponsored, they'll still give you $50 a month. Uh, oh, wow. towards your membership to go train, right? Um, you just got to put an application in. You go on the website. Uh, I think it's adoptacopbjj.org, I think, not .com, .org. And you go in, there's an officer application you put in there. Um, but it's pretty pretty outstanding. We've got a fair number of people now that are, that are applying, um, just waiting to go through the process. One guy got approved and then immediately got COVID, not from jujitsu training, uh, <laughs> from work. And uh, so now he's kind of on hold, right? But he'll be able yeah, to train yeah. with that. So I put that out there because I mean, there's a lot of people that if you you know if you're listening, if you run a school, uh, consider becoming an affiliate because I think it's pretty awesome. I mean, they send you a cool flag to put up in your gym and stuff too. But um, you know, be part of the be part of the positive change instead of the ones just bitching and moaning about what cops do or don't do. You know, that's kind of my theory. Um, and then another good one, I'm actually wearing the hoodie. Is Invictus? Yeah. Um, the Invictus uh, LEO Collective. They they kind of have some pretty cool stuff too. They're their hashtag is BJJ make it mandatory, which I obviously am on board with. Um, so I'm pretty excited about those things. Cause I think that jujitsu has the power to change a lot of things in the world. Honestly, I don't think that's an exaggeration. What it does for your mental health, what it does for your physical health. You've got people from all different walks of life and cultures and backgrounds of the train. And you're, you know, you're in it to make your training partners better and to improve yourself. And we literally um, sweat, bleed and, you shouldn't really cry in the mask, but maybe cry a little bit um, to make people better. And I think that's, that's huge. And so when you apply that same energy toward law enforcement, imagine the changes that could, it could have, um, you know, I think that's big, but that's something else that I've kind of been uh, learning about and getting into during this, these, these times. Um, so I think that's pretty cool and worth mentioning. I think that's pretty amazing actually. And um like they have the school and then ha or like have a school be, uh, it was a adopt a cop BJJ dot org. Mm. Yeah. Do that. And then have them come in and learn. And of course, like word of mouth. And like you said, now you're doing something positive towards a problem yeah. or something that you want to see a change in or whatever you want to call it. I think that's absolutely great. And I'm glad that the, uh, your school TFTC has now got it and doing it. So that's fairly oh, yeah. dope. Um, yeah. So, I mean, like, it's definitely something I think has helped because, I mean, the big argument too for like the gym shutting down was like, that's a place for people like to get their, you know, their oh, mental yeah. health. And I definitely have yeah. been able to tell a huge difference since coming yeah. back. I know you have too. The not Absolutely. being able to roll, like sitting there, just kind of like, you can run on an elliptical all you want, but like the training you get with a partner, the training you get as a group and kind of everybody struggling together or succeeding or whatever it is really makes a difference in your mental health. So I'm glad that Absolutely. now that's another avenue for law enforcement officers to use to hopefully get some training, get some like, just be tired at the end. Feel good. <laughs> well, and, and you, you, know, you think about it too, like, um, not saying that there's not the exception. There's always the exception, right? Never say yeah. never, never, or what is it? Always never say, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Doing the whole George Bush thing. Fool me once. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, you know, never say always or something like that. Yeah. Never say never. I think it kind of applies across the board, the extremes. But when you go, when you train jiu-jitsu, you start out, you got people come in there and they're cocky and they want to fight and they want to do all this and that. They get into jiu-jitsu, they get humbled. And the longer you train in this and the longer you go in and the deeper you delve, um, the less you want to actually like street fight, you know, you, you're out there in the mats, you're getting humbled and you're learning and uh, it, it really changes your, your whole perspective of violence, uh, real violence. And uh, you know, why would that not be the same for, for law enforcement? And that's not even saying that, you know, Hey, the vast majority of law enforcement aren't, aren't doing the wrong thing, but you know, who was it? We said this way long ago. And when I first started talking on here uh, about jujitsu being a douchebag filter. And I think that that's, that carries out 
you know, no matter what profession is involved, whether it's military, law enforcement, firefighters, doctors, lawyers, whatever, anybody that comes in there and rolls long enough, you know, if, if you're that douchebag that's, that's just wanting to hurt people, you're probably not going to last. Yeah. Uh, Cause there's, there's going to be some, some kind person in there. That's just an absolute savage on the mats. It's just going to rip you apart with a smile on their face and it's going to change your entire perspective. Uh, and you know, I know I've been there, you got these guys that are skinny and gangly and you're like this guy, you know, uh, this guy is a little, a little bitch. And then all of a sudden he's got you in some <laughs> inverted triangle nonsense. And you're like gasping for air. You're like what the hell just happened to me? Um, you know, it's, uh, I love it, man. Jiu-Jitsu was like nothing else. It, life was not the same without it for four months, not even close. Yeah. yeah. And it, I think it just kind of snowballs. I'll, I'll 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 stop my preaching to the choir here because i know if you're listening to this like i think andrew smith said a long time like or no jeff shaw was saying that andrew smith said like if you're listening to this why aren't you doing jujitsu but like you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. you can uh, i mean yeah. you, may, you may think it's a pro wrestling podcast you're half right but with um with that it kind of snowballs in my opinion like you don't have jujitsu so you go to work you get stressed so you come home you try to work out mm-hmm. and then you don't get that and then you're just like fuck and you bring it to work the next day and it just and you take it home and you kick your dog and you know <laughs> <laughs> you kick my dog you know i love my dog I know. <laughs> yeah. you know i gotta talk like that when i talk about my dog oh my dog <laughs> miss my dog <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But uh, life is good with jujitsu back in the world, man. I, I'm so excited to be back in there. I mean, I missed a few days training because of the holidays. I went to Tennessee and saw my awesome nephew. And because of the holidays, I didn't get to drop in and see Samuel Braga, which I'm kind of bummed about. But uh, yeah. next, next trip out, I'll make sure I go in and get my ass kicked by him for a few rounds. Hell yeah. Um, but uh, I can't wait to go back tomorrow. I'm back on the mats again tomorrow. And, you know, same. Can't wait to roll with you again, man. Oh, dude, it's so if great. you don't know anything about Rob, if you don't know anything about Rob listening to this podcast, it is called the Big Jiu Jitsu Show. He's a big, strong guy. He can move lightweight, and it is ridiculous. <laughs> it's not even fair. It's not yeah. even fair. Well, now I'm playing. I'm playing catch up on moving like a lightweight now. So, <laughs> so I was like, what was it like, Axel Rose when he came out for like the reunion show and he's trying to do Welcome to the Jungle and. He's just like all excited and he's like, ah, whew, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. We'll get better. We'll get back. <laughs> but, but speaking of, I guess maybe things we're catching up on, things we're moving towards. If you are listening and you want us to talk about something, because Lord knows we've all had a break for a while shoot us a message, shoot us something on Instagram, shoot us something on Facebook, do something, hit us up. Unless you're trying to sell us geese out of Pakistan, don't do that because I don't fucking answer yeah. them. <laughs> but everything else is pretty yeah. much fair game. I would, I would wager to say that if two people are running a jujitsu podcast, they probably already have geese that they prefer and like. Yeah. And we're not just going to go and buy some geese from some random person from Pakistan. Just... Hello, sir. I am manufacturer of great martial art geese. <laughs> I don't, if it starts out like that, I don't fucking care. Like just yeah, don't even bother. Yeah. But do you have anything for our listeners and our friends before we head out? Uh, it's just great to be back both on the podcast and uh, on the mats. And uh, I hope that there are a lot of people listening. They're in that same boat and they're back on the mats and feeling refreshed and happy to be back doing what they love. Um, but like Rob said, if you got topics you want us to talk about and shit, if you know some good uh, potential guests, to get on here oh yeah uh shoot shoot us some messages we're we're down to talk about anything with anyone um you know but i'm just i'm just thrilled to be back and looking at your pretty face again rob oh shucks you're so gorgeous (laughs) and i missed you (laughs) but on that note ladies and gentlemen this is another episode of the big jujitsu show we are still sponsored by trap and roll soap company tape armor and rolls gear and you can find all of our old episodes still at bjjshow.com I'm Rob. I'm Randy. We'll catch you guys next time.